Hey y'all, this is Joe out at the cabin out here at St. Bernard Acres. This is Sunday the 23rd of July. I drove out here just to check on the place because I know it's way too wet to do anything. It has been raining pretty much steady since Friday evening and uh, or maybe even Thursday. Unbelievable. And uh, my buddy's over there working, I guess. But uh, yeah, it's, it's too wet for us to come out here and do anything. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk about something. Because you know I like to talk. And this is what could be a good discussion thing to talk about. Um, Stephen Hawking's latest prediction about mankind. And he said that we basically had a hundred years to colonize another planet if we wanted to save the human race. If we wanted to save humanity. We only have a hundred years left. Um, what's scary is <laughs> you very well could be right. Uh, there are many factors involved. I mean, you can take your pick of the plethora of reasons that this could happen, in fact. Um, from, you know, volcanic disasters, uh, nuclear war, biological war, uh, pandemics, artificial intelligence, overpopulation, I mean just a, a, a wide range of things could actually make that happen. And the one I found surprising that, that they talked about was artificial intelligence and I never really considered that but you start building these robots that have artificial intelligence and then they start you know advancing beyond where humans have evolved and, and they be start building themselves and build smarter ones and smarter ones. Uh, you know, as, as science fiction as that sounds, if you think about it, there's, you know, I can see that <laughs> happening. Um, and I thought it was funny because it made me think of the movie iRobot. Uh, and Will Smith, you know, they go to that place where they build the robots. They got like a thousand robots in there. and uh, She takes him in and says there's no humans in the building. It's totally automated. And Will Smith says something along the lines of, you've got robots building robots. <laughs> you know, and it's like, he's right. You know, who knows what could come of it. And uh, the other thing is overpopulation. And that's a very real thing as well because we're burning through Earth's resources much quicker than she can replenish them. Uh, there's, there's less and less opportunity for new resources to feed the millions of people that are, are being born every month. Um, so that that will definitely lead to an apocalyptic type event. Um, my question about that, because I do see a, a realism aspect of it, um, I was questioning, okay, if we can go colonize another planet, we can't do Mars. Um, now, of the millions of galaxies out there, I'm sure there are going to be planets that have water, that have uh, breathable air, and uh, temperatures that could support humans, if we could find it. I mean, we can't, we don't have the technology to find uh, exoplanets like that. We don't even know what to look for, really. So far, 
beyond our galaxy, and you're looking at hundreds of years to get there. Um, and how do you transport enough people? You know, um, you, you have to transport literally thousands and thousands of people to try to, you know, sustain a civilization or, or humanity, if you will. Um, you can't do it with just a spaceship full of people because you're going to wind up, you know, with, with inbreeding and, stuff. you know, one accident wipes out the entire colony and it's over with. So, there's not realism in that, but just the fact that they're talking that and we may have the te technology at some point to do something like that, well, wouldn't it stand to reason that we have the technology and the money and the ability to fix the problem here? Um, there's nothing wrong with the Earth. It's not the Earth is not going to die. The Earth is going to be here long past us. Uh, all we're talking about are human beings going extinct. That's it. Other life forms will continue on. Um, what the heck is that? It would just be humans that, that cease to exist anymore. And so, I, I mean, I found that pretty fascinating that he's talking a hundred years. So, I asked some people about it, what they thought of it, including my wife, including my son, you know, and I got the same response from everybody. Well, I'm going to be dead in a hundred years anyway, so what do I care? And I think... That's the way a majority of people feel. What do I care? You know, I'm going to be dead. And that got me to thinking about 50 years ago, you know, during the 60s, the late 60s, part of the hippie movement and the flower child movement, that kind of stuff, the whole ecology thing. Um, there used to be a whole thing to save our planet and save... Uh, you know, what are we handing off to future generations? And that was a concern back then, and that got people started with the whole recycling and anti-pollution, and, you know, people were concerned about each other and about the future and about future generations of humans. And 50 years later, it's like that feeling, that sentiment is gone. Now it's like, hey, I'm not going to need it anymore. So what do I care if humanity, you know, disappears in 100 years if we go extinct? And I, I think I found that just as fascinating as the possibility of it. What caused people to change that way? You know, I would like to seriously have discussions on how we might be able to stop the possibility of going extinct so that future generations can flourish here on Earth, you know, in the realm of, of, of the galaxy. I mean, you're looking at, I think they said somewhere between a billion and two billion years the sun would reach a phase where, you know, it would dry up the, the oceans on Earth and basically would destroy Earth. But you're looking at, you know, one or two billion years of that happening, maybe. Uh, not a hundred years. But to me, the hundred years and the fact that I can see some of what they were talking about you know, uh, global warming has become such a joke, but I think too much got wrapped up into the label global warming, the science of it, and what, you know, if 
the other parts of it. You know, not just the temperature. You know, there was a whole lot more involved than just the temperature on it. But all those things, I mean, we can reverse some of that stuff. Um, we can eliminate the threat of nuclear war. We can eliminate biological warfare. We can get rid of the, the weapons-grade diseases and infections that we have to help, you know, eliminate some possibilities there. Be better prepared for pandemics. Uh, if we thought about our, our overpopulation problems and if we dedicated more space and more energy towards growing food and taking care of our water supplies, you know, I realize there's not as much money in that as there is in fracking for gas and oil, you know. But those kind of things we could look at if we were a concerned people like we were 50 years ago. But when asked that question about, you know, hey, the, population, the human race is going to be extinct in 100 years, what do you feel about that? I don't care, I'm going to be dead. Ain't going to matter to me none. I was like, wow, maybe, just maybe, <laughs> it's not a bad thing. <laughs> you know, let the bees take over, you know. Uh, found it interesting that, that Stephen Hawking comes out with the 100 years. And if you really sit back and think about it, it's not that far-fetched an idea. Now, before he said a thousand years, we had a thousand years to colonize another planet. Um, I don't know what transpired in the last few years to make him change his mind to only a century instead of ten centuries. Um, maybe it's because things are just happening so fast these days, and you know the the greed. It's you know, it's because of the attitude of, I don't care. I'm going to be dead. I don't give a shit what happens to the earth. I don't care what happens to humanity. I don't need to you know, I'm going to be dead. So, I don't know. Just some interesting thought for you. You can like it, dislike it, agree with it, disagree with it. I think it would be a, a, a fun subject to have a discussion about that uh, you guys can leave your thoughts on it your opinions um, your ideas on what we could possibly do that, that we can educate people and get people to change their mind and get them to start caring I think if more people cared about it then we can start a movement. Then we can start things happening and maybe stretch that back out again to where it's not a hundred years, but maybe we can add a few hundred years to it. Um, and give us time to colonize another planet. And what are we going to do? Take over that and ruin it. You know, we're going to go destroy that one. It's like uh, Independence Day when, you know, the president mind melded with the alien. You know, and he said they just go from planet to planet till they destroy all the resources there and then they move on to the next one. So that's what we're going to turn into. We're just going to go from planet to planet destroying them because we don't have enough respect for what we have here. We don't have enough appreciation for what we have here. And uh, I think that's a shame. I really, it, it, it's an embarrassment to the human race is what that is. So... I ramble on. Leave your thoughts if you want. Yes, I did all the dishes yesterday. We got everything done. Got the kitchen completely cleaned up. I did them. We did not video it, but trust me, I did. And uh, I'm going to have to do it again. Now, when Gail went to the store, uh, Nick happened to be home, so he took her up to Kroger's. You know, 
and she bought paper plates and stuff like that that we're going to be using. So I don't have to do as many dishes. But, uh, anyway, that's it. I'm going to get on back out of here. I uh, hope you like this. If you do, give me a thumbs up. Share this. Discuss it with people. You know, talk to others. Spread the, the word that we can possibly save this or, or turn this around a bit. If we all work together and work collectively. Um, but... This is Joe, out at the cabin at St. Bernard Acres. That is all.